Hey guys, what's up and welcome to the first installment of the Valhalla Academy series. This series is going to be dedicated to helping you get the most out of this game through guides, tips and tricks and some tasty in-depth reviews. Today we're going to be going through the best weapons available to you in the game at the moment. If you do enjoy this style of video and you do find value in this content then hit subscribe because I'm making it for you and I'd absolutely love to know what you think down below in the comments. And if you do like it, I'll make lots lots more. If you're new to the channel, my name is Andy, cheers for tuning in and let's get into it. So the best weapon in the whole game right now is the blacksmith hammer. And that's it for this video, cheers guys, make sure you hit subscribe. <laughs> I'm just kidding, it's a good hammer, but we'll get into that. But the first thing I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to exclude all of the helix items from this list. Some of these helix weapons are excellent, and I'll briefly talk about them at the end, but this video is all about what we can get in-game, and not what we can buy in the shop, pay-to-win kind of thing, if you know what I mean. I want this video to be impactful, so I don't want to be reviewing every single weapon, as I think we're going to be here longer than we need to be. <laughs> I'm only going to be breaking down the top two or three weapons of each class, which I think would give you the best source of value and knowledge, and it's going to get you back into the game to try them out, which is my goal in this video at the end of the day. So we're going to go from 29 available weapons in game that we can get, and we're going to shrink this down to 13. By the way, if you don't agree with any of my selections, then sweet. Let me know down below and we can have a few beers over Discord on why flails, they do suck. <laughs> Fair enough. One of the great things about Valhalla is that there is no definitive answer surrounding what is the best weapons. Now, this isn't a cop-out answer. Make the badge proud, Slater. But your style of gameplay may be different to mine, and because of that, I may rank weapons in this video, which you're going to be feeling differently. Anyway, let's take a look at the axes first, which are the alternative to the one-handed swords. Hopefully we'll get that soon. But there's only two here really at the moment, which are worth running with. And that's the House Carl and the Varen. Comparing them both, they're quite similar when upgraded and they're both really deadly as a combo. As a main hand though, the House Carl's attack, which is arguably one of the most important stats on the weapon, scales after every hit, stacking 10 times, so that gives you a potential plus 15 attack. Doesn't sound like much, but it really does make an impact when you've got the buff on. To get it up to this 15 attack though, you've got a two second window on this refresh scale, so if you're hitting light attacks, building up for a heavy, then that's a dream boat waiting to happen. If you combine this though with a Varin, who, unlike the house Carl, prioritizes a bit of speed instead of attack, but also uses the scale factor in regard to the buff, then both of these weapons are really impactful going forward as a combo. With the House Carl, which prioritizes attack, and the Varen, which prioritizes speed, using these in tandem with each other, utilizing that two second buff, if you're playing quite quickly and rapidly, this really, really will melt mobs in this game. I've had absolutely no issues. In actual fact, I feel overpowered when using these two axes in the game on Drenger difficulty. My recommendation is use them as a combo. They're awesome. But if you just want to run with one particular axe, use the house car if you want to hit harder and use the Varin if you want to hit quicker. Now let's move on to some hammers. And when it comes to hammers, you probably know what I'm going to recommend here. And you'd be right. Molyneux is an absolute beast. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> but, in my honest opinion, there's actually a better alternative if you feel like a bit of a hammer time, and that's the blacksmith's hammer, that's right. Running with the bonus of the heavy crits, knocking enemies to the ground, is actually more impactful than the stun damage AoE proc from Molyneux. Particularly if you're running with a shield in your offhand, knocking enemies to the ground with a high crit build to get that stomp down is way more effective than AoE splash damage, especially if you run with that shield and that can give you an AoE damage on the parry if you sock it appropriately. If you haven't tried running with them both, then do, especially if you prefer to ditch the shield. I actually found this combo when running around in the Thrall robes, just to kind of get a good familiarity of what they're capable of, to be a pretty good melter when it comes to weapon combos in the game. I think they were actually on par with the two axes we just talked about. There's also this cool animation when they shrink after you use them and put them to the waist, which was, I thought was pretty sweet. So blacksmith over the Thor on this one for me, just purely because of the crit hit knockdown, but running with them both, hey, you're not gonna go too wrong. Now, when it comes to daggers or seeks or however you wanna pronounce it, I spent the majority of my storyline in this game running around with double daggers. So I'm probably gonna be a little biased here when it comes to these bad boys. However, I enjoy the aspect of having two weapons that feels like lightning in my hands, especially when using a light armor set like the Mentor's Robes to kind of boost my speed and crit rate. So Tungas, oh God, I'm, I can't pronounce that, but we're gonna go with it, is the standout choice really for anyone who wants to shred 
in this game. The bonus of this dagger that it increases the damage after each hit, which is a complete no-brainer really for any sort of weapon selection. All stats on the weapon are excellent and it should be your go-to dagger first and foremost, no questions asked. However, if you're looking for a kind of a dual wield alternative, then I'd recommend the Copis purely because of the bonus proc. It restores a small amount of health for each crit, but if you've picked the appropriate armor set built around enhancing that critical chance, then you're gonna significantly profit from these choices. I find myself pretty much indestructible on very hard settings running around with these two daggers. I'll take the piss, Boris. I'll show you now. You'd be surprised how often that cope is procs and it keeps you topped up frequently. Combine that with a few crit runes that scale for fuel health and you're looking at a demigod build in Saxon England. Now two honourable mentions which you could switch the copus out for if you feel pretty confident in your dodge or parry abilities or that last minute ration save and that's the Yingling Seeks, which increases your damage after a dodge, which I'd suggest you switch in for for a Copus if you're feeling quite trigger happy on the old X button or dodge button. And arguably, you could also run with the Ceremonial Seeks if you manage to get it from the Yule event because it's got a really good crit chance increase after you kill someone, which is beneficial for someone who's cutting down a lot of NPCs real quickly and running riot with it. So my recommendation when it comes to daggers is definitely dual wield because we're going for a high crit speed build here so tunga's claws got to be your main hand no questions asked there if you want to be safe and have that topped up health all the time run with copis if you're mowing down a lot of npcs you're going to profit from a crit chance on the ceremonial seeks if you're killing them quite quickly and run with the yingling seeks if you're a bit of a dodger so ladies and gents we're halfway through the video so far so if you've learned anything new laughed or <laughs> found value in this video do me a favor scroll down rotate that phone of yours and hit that subscribe button because i've got a lot more content like this that i'm looking forward to showing you anyway let's move on to the meta and let's talk about some spears so if you're looking for a bit of a meta build where you can smash your face against the controller and win then <laughs> look no further ladies and germs because dual spears is for you they are absolutely outstanding keeping npcs at range and doing a good amount of damage in the process so you don't really have to wait until next week quite like the flails which we'll get to to actually kill a mob now there's three spears in my opinion to choose from which i feel you can't really go wrong with odin spear which is the clear front runner in my opinion just purely for the reach boost effect because the idea for me when i'm playing with spears is i want to keep them as far away as possible and continually poke them until they die another consideration when it comes to spears is fafnir's fang which i think is is a good honorable mention here because the crit chance and i love crit increases when you're surrounded by more than three enemies so if you're one of those people who likes to encourage everybody to come and say hello but keep them at a safe distance then look no further than fafnir's fang and my final honorable mention when it comes to spears is the fjord spear if you're a bit of a disco dodger Spears generally are quite slow comparatively to other weapons you can choose from so increasing that speed boost from dodging around with spears is definitely a worthwhile investment if you're that type of player. But if you prefer standing your ground in the middle of a large group of enemies and just poking away Fafnir is going to be your boy. Now when it comes to my recommendation if you haven't tried the dual wield spears give it a whirl. Gun gear, Fafnir, get them all over to you and let me know down below if you enjoy it. That's what she said. Now great swords if you're after a two-handed sword then look no further than the Carolina Longsword. <laughs> now, I'm not a great fan when it comes to two-handers in this game. I honestly think that Ubisoft have missed a bit of an opportunity here because they're pretty awesome, but they're pretty rubbish in-game. I do tend to find them quite slow and cumbersome. However, the Longsword offers an increase in crit damage after a finisher, which is something particularly good for this weapon because it's slow but heavy hitting, and it's going to boost your damage after you do those finishes. Excalibur is, of course, another entry here, but I don't actually find the weapon too good. It's more of a mid-tier offensive tool, and it's good to switch it in when you fancy some cool-looking kind of combat, but the blinding proc, it doesn't actually last for very long, and it doesn't interrupt the NPC attack queue system as much as you'd really hope. So, you know, I love the two-handed sword, but I don't find them practical or impactful when used frequently in combat, with the only exception being the Carolinigan sword, which obviously increases that crit damage. So give it a whirl, see what you think. Moving on to those Dane axes, again, similarities with the two handers. I don't find them very attractive or appealing to use because they're just so slow. They are absolute beasts, don't get me wrong. And there's only one real standout choice here, and that is the and that's the Septula's axe. God, my pronunciation, Jesus Christ. The reason why this is so good isn't because of the stats, it's because it ignites your weapon after a critical hit. And as you can see, this game rewards critical choices here. So if you're going for a big, heavy hitting crit build, 
this is going to be the axe for you especially if you're doing a bit of a fury rotation in a group of mobs running with this one is going to set the whole world on fire the only other meaningful mention would be Vordir's bite it's a combo finisher hits which have a good chance to drop a poison cloud and i'll be honest that is severely average anyway it's not 100 percent certain meaning that every finisher could drop a cloud but it's not always going to be the case and when it comes to all the other axes, I don't even think they're worth mentioning. Those are your only two main choices if you want to run with a Dane axe. Now, when it comes to fails or fails, as I like to call them, good joke, right? Have you guys heard this one? <laughs> oh! Well, to be honest with you, I'm really not a great fan of these. They are incredibly cumbersome and they take a while to charge up and get going. You know, fair play to you troopers if you do like to use one of these, they're just not for me. But I would say that the only free flail that I would recommend is the soldier's flail, which increases your speed when close to full health. The reason why I'd say that this one is the best out of the three that we've got available is that speed is very important for flails. So when you're actually able to get your combo rotation off and when it does go off, the flail does actually perform pretty well. It's just getting it to that point and pinning an NPC in place. And when you do do that, it can be pretty satisfying. For me though, I find them too temperamental and not solid enough choice for any sort of meaningful fight with NPCs, especially particularly in crowds. I think you've got to get too close for them and you have to get the charge up correct before they actually are robust enough to do any significant amount of damage. This is a good segue onto Helix items. Me personally, I haven't actually purchased any of these. I'm not a great fan of pay to win as it were, but these three weapons I would say are decent enough to slot in to the class recommendations I've put forward. Anyway, Frost Rune Flail, great stats. If you like playing with flails, then this is, it may be worth the purchase for you. Combine that with the two-handed Dwarven Axe and the Aria Share weapon, all three of these, I would say, are good enough weapons to make the shortlist that I've put forward. If you do run with any one of these, let me know down below. I'm interested to see what you think because I don't personally run with them. Anyway, ladies and gents, thanks for hanging out. I hope you learned something new. And if you did, drop a sub. I'm planning on making more of these types of videos for bows, shields, armors, builds and skills, but only if you guys would like to see them. So let me know down below if you do. Hit a like if you enjoyed it and found this useful. And I'll catch you in the next video. Cheers, guys.